Kia ora everybody and welcome back to Civilization 5. Today we're going through one of the only, in fact I think the only, civilization in the game that has two unique ranged units. Ranged units of course generally being better because they can be aggressive or defensive, but spoiler alert, these two are both pretty aggressive. Let's jump straight in to my England guide in Civilization 5. So, what does England do? Well, their unique ability is the sun that never sets. It provides plus two movement to all naval units. That's not just your warships, by the way, but also any embarked um, civilian units as well. And when a civ enters the Renaissance era, when any civ, mind you, you will get two spies instead of one. Now, spies shouldn't be slept on in this game. I know that they're not quite as effective as they are in Civilization VI, but... Having two instead of one, that is literally twice the spy power, completely for free, and every time you step foot in the ocean, you bounce two further tiles uh, north than everybody else. So for starters, England's unique uh, Sun Never Sets ability is really great. It also combos with the fact that their starting bias uh, is very strongly emphasized towards the coast. So if you have a strong coastal starting bias, you're likely going to spawn on the coastline. Uh, and this also combos nicely with one of their unique units. So I might as well start with that. Let's talk the ship of the line. The ship of the line replaces the frigate. Okay. The frigate is um, probably the best naval unit in terms of uh, how early you unlock it relative to its power. So it's it's time to power ratio is really good, right? Um, you unlock the frigate with navigation, so it's in the Renaissance era. It's the first really meaningful ship of the game. Um, of course, it later upgrades into the battleship, and it does require iron. Now, that's the normal frigate, okay? It has, it has um, a ranged attack, right? It's a ranged ship. Uh, usually it has um, 25 strength and 28 range strength. The English ship of the line has 30 strength and 35 range strength. That's a 20 to 25% bonus on how much damage this thing can do. The only negative to it is that uh, it does cost a little bit more to upgrade, and uh, but it is slightly cheaper to construct. So not only is it more powerful, but it's cheaper. Furthermore, and this is what really sets it apart, it has three sight up from the standard two. Combo that with the fact that England, by their very nature, has an extra two movement points on their naval units, and your frigates, right from the word go, will have a really wide range, as you'll see in the video, and um, also a really wide line of sight, three tiles wide and eight tiles traveling per turn. Really powerful unit, and once you get them, I would recommend that you uh, generally sort of move towards them quite quickly. Uh, not necessarily rush them down, but move towards them quickly. Once you get them, you'll roll over cities. Likewise, the second unique unit, I can't believe it. The Civ has two unique units that are fantastic dominating units. It's the longbowman. And I think that a lot of people would say that the longbowman is the best or oh, top three units in the game. It's hard to say if it's actually the best. Let me tell you why I put it in my top three. It replaces the composite bowman, which is already a fantastic unit, right? We love our crossbows. We love our composite bows. We love our archers. Why? As I said at the start of the video, they're great at defending because you can strike from range without having to get up close and personal within uh, melee range. Uh, and also they're great at offense for that very same reason. The English Longbowman is a world apart from that though, simply because of one very simple change, plus one range. What that means is this unit moves just like a normal one, right? Two tiles per turn, relatively slow, just like an archer, but its attack range is up from two to three. It is really one of the only units in the game that can strike this far away, bar actual missiles and aeroplanes. It has a three range strike. What that means is you can strike cities or enemy units 
without being in their range, okay? This is particularly powerful for cities because cities can't move, right? You can strike an enemy unit from far away from three tiles, so you're usually gonna get the upper hand, which is great. But of course, they will eventually move towards you. You can play cat and mouse with them though because you can strike at three. Um, so you do have some options, but where this is really strong and where the longbowman really excels is taking down cities. Not because it's necessarily very strong at taking them down, you're still gonna deal more damage with the likes of a tribuchet, a dedicated siege unit, but because the longbowmen, providing there aren't any hills or, or mountains blocking their range, can fire from three tiles away, you can strike the city and it can't strike you back, and it can't move to reposition. Basically, you can fire at cities for as long as you like without fear of being attacked back from them, so long as you protect your English longbowmen with a couple of melee units and of course bring a melee unit along to actually take the city, you basically have free damage with these guys. They are absolutely insane. I cannot stress that <laughs> enough. Now, let's talk strategy. First up, social policies. I think that a liberty opener makes a lot of sense. It allows you to expand your borders immediately uh, without necessarily needing a monument. Um, and of course, building them will help offset your social policy costs. Um, you're probably going to complete the tree, I would say. Uh, all of these options are really good. Um, you're likely going to be playing a relatively aggressive game. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but because of that, the happiness bonuses that are um, able to be picked up through Liberty are really great. The next one I would recommend that's out of the ordinary is Exploration. Exploration stacks really well with the bonuses that you already have, right? You're playing coastal cities. You're likely to have harbors. You're going to have frigates. All of your units move and view, right, their actual sight, line of sight range at the ocean, both really good. Combine that with exploration, which provides you with additional gold, additional happiness, additional movement for your units as well. That's a stacked bonus. Really, really great. Um, and outside of that, I think that rationalism is a good pick. Of course, as always, because you do want to keep up with your science so that you can keep your units upgraded. Your frigates will only become better as you upgrade. Well, <laughs> you should upgrade them into better units. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. Um, in terms of uh, pitfalls to avoid with your strategy, I have a few that are really important. So I'm going to stress them now. The first one is iron. Iron is king. Iron is king. You need iron for your ships of the line, okay? Do not neglect iron. Make sure you have iron connected first. You're probably also gonna want to use that iron to build swordsmen to accompany your longbowmen. So do not forget about iron and bring your melee units with you as well. This is a, a two-pronged tip. Make sure you bring some melee units along the way. Um, finally, the National Intelligence Agency, Agency, which is unlocked quite late in the game, um, is quite useful. So you might wanna go for that, but don't single-handedly beeline it either. You can, um, you can allow yourself a little bit of time. Uh, and also, uh, one tiny little thing at the end, your unique units are fantastic, but they will become obsolete, so don't forget to upgrade them when you can. That concludes my guide for England, and of course, uh, before I leave, I should mention they are obviously a domination sieve. You're gonna be playing a domination game. You could play anything with them. They are fairly well balanced and average across the board, but domination's the way to go. Focus on your happiness, focus on your gold, really hustle with your unique units, and you won't struggle to dominate your opponents just like I have done in this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.